everybody. Thanks everybody for coming to this panel. Um, I'm so glad to be talking to uh, Madeline Rupert. Thank you for like inviting me to be part of Ladies Con because I know you've done this convention before um, and course. everything changed, but you- <laughs> And then it all changed. And, and then the Fire Nation attacked. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my name is Ngozi Ukazu. I am the writer and illustrator of Check Please. I have my books on hand because I just oh, did a virtual panel. I, I have your books, don't worry. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. I have Sakana. There it is. There it is. Um, so um, yeah, I I'm the writer and illustrator of Check Please, uh, which just came the final book in the series just came out in April. And yeah, and I know Madeline because we both went to the Savannah College of Art and Design, where we school. where we learned. Well, I you were already learning comics, and I came in and caught up with the learning. <laughs> so that's me. Cool. And uh, my name is uh, Mad Rupert, or Madeline, whichever sounds better. I make uh, Sakana, which Ngozi is helpfully holding up right here. Um, I, yeah, I am the artist and writer of that. Uh, I am the artist and writer of a few different comics um, that I've been self-publishing. Uh, I've also done a lot of work with uh, licensed comics, like Adventure Time Regular Show, and uh, Ngozi and I are also working on a project together. Uh, that she is writing and I am drawing, and that will be out at some point. Yeah, pretty okay, cool. And so this panel, I think we we both been on so many panels together, and we cover so many topics. I wanted to, I don't know, we both were thinking like something very like fun to talk about. And yeah, something easy, like I could go on and on about this. Yeah, and I think inspiration in comics, like. Because what's like one of the biggest questions that students or just people starting out have? It's like, how do I develop my style? How do I find my style? Yeah. Um, and I think we're going to talk about our biggest influences, uh, media that in, that influenced our influences. The, the, the rabbit hole. The, the rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, and our major projects and what went into them, as well as what is style and then how, how to borrow from work. It's a lot of, um, a lot of ground to cover here. Of, we'll, we'll cover some of it, at least. I, I almost want to start off. Sorry, I'm just like taking the- No, that's fine. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm like, okay, well- I love I'm to not, listen to your voice. No, I just want to, I'm, I wanted to start off by asking, because I'm very curious, what do you think style is? Like when people ask, what is my style? What is your style? How do I help style? Like, what is that? I, okay, so I think style is best exemplified through example. Exemplified through example. Um, so for instance, if I were, I, I feel like I have a pretty solid, solid style. Um, I can't exactly. Recognizable. What's that? It's very recognizable. Thank you. Yes, yeah, I can't exactly say what all led up to this, but at this point, yes, I have a style that people recognize as mine, which, you know, is kind of an important milestone, but definitely very far in the future on your style journey. Um, I think style is, if you're trying to draw something like purposely not in your style, but you find yourself caught like, oh, I'm still making this line the same way, and like people can still tell that I drew this, even though I'm doing everything in my power to make it look like somebody else did. That is your style. Yeah, yeah. Like you can't escape it. It's something that you do <laughs> like unconsciously. You yeah. Know, it's so somehow it is these little bits and bops have just ingrained themselves so deeply in the way that you draw that you they're inescapable. You can't get away from them. I, I I agree. I think really style is just tendency. Yeah. And the overall I think it's tendency and material that you use. Yes. Yeah, and I like think whatever you gravitate yeah. towards. Because like so I think it's like I don't know, I'm like looking at like Sakana style. Like it's like the way it's like a total compilation of like how you draw ears, how you draw yes. faces, like how you even like like even like you you use a certain line width for your characters like it's not like a like it's not sketchy it's like a, a very bold line yeah and, and i close like, all my lines you close your lines your your shapes are all i'm gonna hold up sakana the whole time okay i feel like um, i should have check please it's fine i have check please too it's okay, okay. I, I have everything um but it i think style is just like your tendency is like when i draw hands i usually draw them this way 
And then when I draw hair, I usually draw it this way and all that together come, becomes your style. Yeah. So I think when people ask like, how do I develop my style? It's almost like asking, I think a better question is like, like, actually the answer is just like, look at your tendencies for drawing different parts of uh, your figure or robots or, or do your robots tend to be really curvy or are they really like early aughts technical? Like yeah. what, what tendencies do you have? Is it a Gundam? Is, is it, it a an Evangelion? What is it? Yeah. Is it is it more like a Jack Kirby, just a pile of like different stuff. shapes? Yeah, yeah just pile of stuff. Or is it like super sleek? Is it a Michael housing? Bay Transformers? You don't yeah. know what you're looking at? Yeah, it's just, it's yeah. just a bunch of stuff. So I mean, I guess like I like I mean I could do this all day. I don't even want to talk about my stuff. I want to just talk about like dissecting dissecting your art and talk about your influences. No, we're going to dissect each other's art. And if we have time, maybe it'll just be, no, I'm just kidding. Um, do you want to start off with your influences while I like, just like, I mean, you can even pull okay. up a page of Sakana because we can screen share, but. Oh, I just put away all my pages of Sakana in my, oh, man. In, like in the basement. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Um, um, so w what would you say are your influences? Like your big two or three? Okay. I would say that my biggest influences or Sakana. I think, I think they're split between writing and art. Um, I would say that my biggest writing influence is definitely uh, Terry Pratchett and Discworld. Mm. Uh, I love Discworld a whole bunch. If you don't know, it's this big fantasy world. <laughs> it's this big fantasy world that uh, Terry Pratchett created. It's like all these interwoven stories. It has a lot to do with like parodying real world events and things that people struggle with and like fairy tales and stuff like that. So it's got a very uh, uh, topical approach to sort of fantasy, you know, shenanigans. And so I like that kind of thing. I like that sort of like, it's funny, it's ironic, the humor is dry. Um, it's all about how people are kind of like fed up with the world, but underneath they really care. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I appreciate that a lot. And for art, I would say, um, I don't, a lot of people, I don't think if they I know can, what you're gonna say. If, I don't know if they can pinpoint my style. If they are completely uninformed, they will say, it's not Scott Pilgrim. It's not Scott Pilgrim. It's because, I have bold lines and I ink my stuff uh, by hand. It's not me. I'm Scott Pilgrim. Um, <laughs> actually, my biggest style influence, I would say, would be uh, Jamie Hewitt, who did all the art for Tank Girl and the Gorillas. Wow. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if you can probably see that in the hands yeah. and uh, like the kind of square bodies and everything. Um, also, my favorite. Uh, the year 2001 PS2 JRPG Okage Shadow King, which is my favorite video game that I'm obsessed with and nobody else is, that has influenced my style probably more than anything else Someone's in the like, world. Also Kaiji, also something nobody else is written. Well, I, I feel like the the gorillas, um, I, I, Jamie Hewitt art, yeah. Is it forms your people, yes. but when you get into like the magical, like yes. fantasy world, that is all um, Okage. Okage, so, yeah, it's Terry Pratchett. It's Red Wall. Yeah. I love it. It's Red Wall, and your storytelling too. I feel like Terry Pratchett is someone that doesn't take himself too seriously, but is but can be earnest. Yeah, when, when I needed. think earnest. Yeah, like not. Unserious but earnest. Yeah, right? Not not cynical. Yeah, just yes. like not cynical but earnest. Not, yes, yeah, are my 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 benchmarks here. Yeah, it has to be hope. It has to be. There has to be just a little bit of hope, but not so much that we're like. Ugh, Things it's can like, always get better. Yeah, let's have I'm, some fun but be hopeful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, what would you say are your biggest influences for sure. check, please? Um. Let's see, I think like, if you can split it to storytelling and then art-wise. Storytelling, I'm very heavily influenced by all the sitcoms I watched growing up. I am very much like a TV person that like 
for whatever reason, TV on like the pyramid of art is like very high, like <laughs> 22 minutes of like a very constructive it's story. Digestible bites, like, like storytelling, digestible storytelling is so important. The digestible, like swift, witty, like very well-crafted storytelling is just a like- A cupcake every day. Yeah. Yeah, and, it, and there's something exciting where when you get to see all three acts of a story just like play out and yeah. characters be stupid. Uh -huh. So like Frasier, The Simpsons, um, what, I watched so many things. It's like, like Malcolm in the Middle, King of the Hill. Yeah. Like, like what is any of every, all of the UPN block that was just like Moesha and Sister Sister. Which is yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, like even I Love Lucy, um, like the Dick Van Dyke show, like all those old shows too. I really, I really love so I tend to like stories that are basically just different metaphors for family, found family. Yeah. Um, art wise, also very influenced by TV and animation. Um, I, I had my examples, but it's like, uh, like the Bruce Tim cartoons, the shows that he art directed. Oh yes. And we can look at the genealogy for him. Yeah. Uh, it's like, like Alex Toth. Am I saying that name right? Alex and Toth. then uh, Darwin Cook, who also, I mean, that's. They're kind of exist at the same time. Yes. Um, but like that's why a lot of my figures, I, I'm now trying to put more detail into my art because I realized I was drawing a long time as though my things were animated. So not a lot of detail is in most American <laughs> animated. Like, how are you going to reproduce this a billion yeah. times? Yeah, no. So that's why like the Flash might have like one, di one accent on his like torso. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's why I draw heads a certain way, like, the huge chin is because Bruce Wayne has like a huge chin yeah, in the Batman the animated series. Yes. Um, do you do the you do the cheek bump, right? I do. I, I do the cheek bump. I always. And, I think that's like the biggest deviation between our styles is that you do the cheek bump and I only do like geometrical heads. Yeah, yeah. The cheek bump for whatever reason, we're like what is that zygomatic, whatever. Arch. I don't know. Yeah. It. It's just like. I don't know why. It's I, it's, I just learned that. It's polarizing. Yeah, it's polarizing. Either you do it or you don't do it. <laughs> um, and then another is, I would say, uh, Jendi Tarakovsky, the guy who did Powerpuff Girls, like did a lot of art direction yeah. for Powerpuff Girls, Dexter's Lab, uh, Samurai Jack as my favorite. Um, so I, I think I came, my struggle is coming from flat, detail as art that was beautiful in motion to um trying to bring more dimension to my art and more um like uh more more pattern yeah yeah volume i would say those are the two, my two biggest influences for a while i was just like i need to draw like this just like flat planes of gouache painting <laughs> which it's so like yeah one brush stroke yeah it's it's been a struggle um I, I'm really interested in what you dug up, or if you know, the, the people who influenced your inspirations. So, uh, I'll admit I did not dig up for all of them, but okay. I did go down a pretty uh, interesting uh, avenue for another one that I forgot to mention. Uh, probably my most, uh, um, I think a lot of people can probably, probably say that uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas influenced mm -hmm. them. I'm very influenced by The Nightmare Before Christmas, that like kind of cute, spooky, sort of. Like it's it's scary, but it's not like threatening. I don't know. It's Or maybe it's threatening, but it's not scary. It's like some sort <laughs> of weird, like it's cool, but it's creepy sort of mixture that I love so much. And uh, I was kind of going down uh, a hole there, and um, yeah, so I think what, what we should probably preface this portion of the panel with is, um, if, you're, if you're influenced by something, if you like something, um, and you want to sort of bring it into your little lexicon of influences, it's important to sort of explore it, not just sort of take it at surface value. So... For instance, Ngozi and I in grad school came up with, uh, should I say it? Oh, go ahead. The There's Five no. Nights at Freddy's Conundrum, oh, which was... <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh, boy. But that was really popular in 2015. It was so popular when we were in grad school, and so many people were influenced by it. But a lot of it was like, it seems, I mean, you know, we can be like, huh, they don't know what they're really into. But... Um, 
So I don't mean to sound. Uh, no, no. I, I mean, no, I'll, I'll jump in so I can also be incriminated in this one. Someone brings it. No, like the Five Nights at Freddy's Conundrum, which I have not heard of. I haven't thought about that game in like three years. Exactly. It was this phenomenon of people being so inspired that they would just take wholesale. Yeah, yeah there you go. Pits and pieces of this uh, game instead of looking at the fact that uh, basically it was people being derivative when this game actually was really authentically inspired by, like, I don't, what was it called? The Rock of Fire Explosion. Yeah, okay, which I still don't even know what If that you is. like creepy animatronics, that is your source for all, all creepy animatronics have come after the Rock of Fire Explosion. And so Five Nights at Freddy's went to the source to create this game where people were going to Five Nights at Freddy's to create their work and you lose a little bit of originality and a bit of yourself when you just, you know, der take something like derive. for sale. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know what? We can even, if you want to start screen sharing, if you want to go through your art examples, and I can go through mine. I don't know how many you have. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. Um, I'm always so bad at screen sharing. I'm never sure, like, what to look at. I can start if you'd like. Sorry. How do I do that? Okay, oh, <laughs> there's a little green button at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, there Here, I'll screen share my... No, wait, uh, I, I found it. Good. All right, there's there we thing. are. Here it is. Okay, we okay. see everything. Do you, do you see anything? No. I'm I see, I see, I see your screen. Yeah, okay. I see your screen. I see the zoom. Okay, here we go. Oh, Anyways. That's awesome. Well, I'm gonna, yeah, okay. Anyways, here's the Adams family. Can you see this? Yes. Okay. So I was talking about uh, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, and everybody loves Nightmare Before Christmas. If you don't, I don't know what's wrong with you. Um, but it, it's not enough, I think, to be influenced by Nightmare Before Christmas. You have to sort of figure out, like, what is that influenced by? What is like it? What is like the things that are like it? And where did those come from? Historically, where do they all sit? That kind of thing. And so um, I went on this deep dive. I don't have uh, pictures of it here, but it turns out The Nightmare Before Christmas was partially inspired by the Rankin Bass uh, uh, Christmas movies, mm -hmm. like uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer and, you know, like Heat Miser, Cold Miser, all of those like stop motion animated movies with like little stuffed animal Rudolph. And I love Rankin Bass, so that was like a, a moment of like, oh my god, all of my favorite things colliding. Other things that you could be, you know, you could potentially look up is like um, the Adams Family were really, really uh, influential to the Nightmare Before Christmas. Charles Adams lived in Philadelphia, which is where I'm from. Um, he, uh, the Adams Family were cartoons before they were, you know, a show or a movie or anything like that. They were comic strips. Uh, also, Edward Gorey, who uh, is another person who's uh, very into this sort of like Victorian, Edwardian, macabre, spooky, but kind of cute, but kind of unsettling. And, um, oh, that's Kaiji. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then also, um, if you like the Adams Family, if you're influenced by the Adams Family, you'd also probably be interested in Ray Bradbury, who is a very uh, another very influential uh, author who did science fiction and fantasy, who created his own family of uh, like you know spooky misfits called the Elliot Family in a book called From the Dust Returned, and you kind of can go through this whole like. You take all of these little morsels and you get one big meal and you, you eat it all up. And then you what you regurgitate is then your own style. <laughs> That's how I would. Mmm, tasty. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we can get into uh, my other things later. If you would like to, do you have? Sure, yeah, I have some things. I was gonna ask, like, are there any moments um, from those images that you pulled up that you definitely see in your art, or is that more like the aesthetic feel of your art? Um, I would say, am I screen sharing again? Yes. Okay, I would say uh, it is both the elements and the aesthetics. I mean, obviously it's, it's different for different things, um, especially for like the Adams Family. Like, obviously I like 
to ink. I like black and white. Um, I like how expressive all of these characters are and how different they all look. That's important to me, is making all of my characters look very different. Um, Edward Gorey, obviously, is textural inking. I well, see I, I see a lot of the mark, I don't know, I see the mark making. I see yeah. that in your in your work. Yeah, so uh, I like uh, I like texture, I like inking. Um, also, oh, I like spooky stuff, I like macabre stuff. I haven't done a comic with uh, Victorian, Edwardian, uh, uh, gothic sort of style, but I would like to, so. <laughs> But I, I see even like this expression. I don't know if you you can't see my mouse. Um, no, I can't. Usually there's a request remote control. No, there's usually an option where I could draw. But like, um, oh, what's his? I don't know the main like the dad's name. Isn't it like Gomez? Gomez. Uh, like I've seen like a fun face like that, and like the turnips that you drew, or I'm sorry, the root the root. Um, oh, yeah, there's little random root monsters. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I also like farms a lot, too. Farm. Yeah. Farm fantasy is a genre that I'm going to pioneer. I believe it. That's my, that's my, uh, that, that's my goal in the future. Okay, I'll pull up my stuff without um, accidentally pulling up what's trending on Twitter, which is very hilarious right now. <laughs> um, oh, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Um, here's, here's, yeah, here's a bunch of things from me. Um, so it's it's so interesting to me, but like I was I, I didn't realize how influenced I was by this cartoon in particular. Like the first comics that I like the first how to draw books that I picked up were all how to draw manga. So I was at the same time I was watching these cartoons, I was drawing like one single anime eye at usually at the art store. Yeah. <laughs> or like in my sketchbook, spending twenty minutes on every shiny anime jelly. I never got it as a kid. It's hard to make them look right. Up. It's hard just, to make them look right. Yeah. But um, so much of my style, like the way that I draw chins, the way that I deal with like body shapes and forms, all these like tapering, like not a lot, of, very continuous lines, um, not a lot of stuff happening within the form, um, but still articulated, like that's, that's all my style today. Um, you can really see it with the line art, like, if, if I had learned earlier on in life to close lines like Bruce Tim, I'd probably just draw, still draw like this. Yeah. But even like, there's like two, maybe three face shapes in Bruce Tim's work. And yeah. those are still the three face shapes that I'm trying to move past. No, <laughs> like, it, it's, it, it, but I think this is um, an important note about style is that uh, once you're settled in one, it can be very difficult to sort of like, break yourself out of certain habits yeah. so when people are like oh i recognize this as whatever in gozi style it's probably because i'm i have like a very like rectangle block chin on a character or a character has this apple um or like heart-shaped face my eyes are usually a lot bigger because that's the anime influence the anime me. that's the that's anime me um but yeah i like for the longest time i would draw characters that would be standing their torsos would be pretty perpendicular to the ground with one leg shooting out at like a 30 degree angle and other leg straight down. This, that, this one. That, that's all I would draw. So that's my Bruce Tim influence. But Bruce Tim was really influenced. I'm gonna, um, this is a Darwin Cook picture, I think. It signed something else, never mind. I'm gonna go. <laughs> but here, here's a Darwin Cook picture. I think the other one was trying to, I think I was trying to pull up an Alex Toss picture. Um, this is a play off, uh, is it Nighthawks by uh, Hooper? But you can see it's like the same type of treatment of the face. There's like, I think um, Darwin Cook um, added a lot more texture to his characters. I think he didn't work as much in animation. So, but that's kind of the direct lineage. So I'm going to stop screen sharing because I don't know what's next. I think it's, oh, and then just in general, I read a lot of American comics growing up, which is probably why, like, superhero comics are very human focused. I am just now trying to draw more animals, draw more robots, draw more ghosts and ghouls. I was so focused on the interpersonal conflicts of human people. So yeah. it probably because all my all the sitcoms I watched as well. So I'm, I'm trying to get, 
grow through that. Right say, now. If you want interpersonal human conflicts, sitcoms, that's the place to get them. That's all it is. Um, let's see. So we're at, we're at 27 minutes, 27 minutes. Um, I'm trying to pull up more questions. Your itinerary. Do you want to talk more? Let's talk more about our major projects and oh. what influenced them. So like, how did, how did Sakana start? Okay. Um, so Sakana started, uh, literally it was a school project. Um, uh, we went on a, uh, which I'm sure if, if anybody in the, in the watching right now has, has seen me speak at any length in the past, they've probably heard this story, but Sakana started as a school project. We went to Tokyo for two weeks uh, for like a cartooning in Tokyo um, uh, off-campus program. And our assignment at the end of those two weeks was to cre create 11 comic strips based on something that we enjoyed while we were on the trip. So a lot of people did uh, auto-bio stuff, like this is what I did, this is how I, uh, you know, felt about it. Um, and for me, I was like, oh, what if I come up with some cool, like, robot thing about, like, oh, some people who get into a fighting robot or something, and I pitched that to my professor, and he was like, Madeline, we didn't even see the Gundam while we were there. And I was like, oh, okay, well, then I have this other story about uh, a bunch of people that work at the Tsukichi fish market, because I loved that when we were there. And he's like, yeah, do that one. And so then that's how Sakana was born. And uh, that's why it's comic strips. I did not choose that for myself. But boy, is it tough to not draw comic strips after you've been drawing them for 10 years. Oh, my God. <laughs> also, Sakana is 10 years old. But um in the fifth grade going on 11 but um going yeah so that is actually how it started uh i was very influenced by the actual fish market uh, i visited multiple times um i just you know kind of consumed everything that i could about it um but yeah it was really honestly when i talk about style it was like the visual splendor of the area i had never seen a place like it before i've never seen anything like it since it's gone now in that form so no one will ever see anything like it again <laughs> unfortunately I do a lot of pictures <laughs> God, that's sad it's very sad but um yeah it's just like and I think specifically it was just the amount of things packed into all of it so there were like boxes on boxes and fish on fish and people on people and like packaging and there were ladders and there were like crawl spaces above every single stall and there were about a hundred stalls per row on either side. It was just like, I, I think that's why I draw so many backgrounds now. I'm like, I've seen what these places look like and it's honestly impossible to convey unless I <clears throat> slam every single detail that I possibly can into the backgrounds here. So yeah, that's also how, you know, just your your like crazy urge to like I have to show you <laughs> that becomes your style. I think my favorite quote from you is boxes on boxes, fish on fish. Fish on fish. <laughs> people on people. <laughs> which is, just, that should just be the tagline for just yeah. entropy. Boxes on boxes. Fish on fish. Yeah. Just who knows what you're getting. Uh, so how about you, Ngozi? How about a okay. please? Well, um, when I was in college, I went on a trip to uh, Canada, and I went to this hockey market. Players <laughs> 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 of pads on pads, pucks on pucks. <laughs> pucks, on pucks. <laughs> no, I mean, so basically, I mean, <laughs> check play started for me. I thought it was only going to be five chapters long. I had written the screenplay. I always thought Sakana was going to be like two chapters. Here we are! Here we are. Um, but I thought that checklist was going to be five chapters long. It was, I, I just finished the screenplay during my senior year of college. It was about hockey. I had fallen head first into hockey culture and loving it. So I started this, I just started this webcomic. It was supposed to be just a joke. What if a 
um, very queer kid who loves baking went to this uh, very bro environment, what would happen? And that ended up being an entire series. One thing that, I mean, that both of us have is this very, I would say almost idiosyncratic, original inspiration, just like an inspiration that is yes. like, I, no one else is making a webcomic about the Shukiji fish market. Yes. No one else has finished a hockey webcomic. <laughs> so it's this idea of like, we were inspired by something and we wanted to just kind of show like the, the urge to show. Yeah. It's yeah. I, I, I agree with that. I do think that the, the style and self-expression has a lot to do with like, something that means a whole lot to you and like you you have this desire to just like impart it upon other people yeah and i mean i i think that's a very you know philosophical view of style but you know, i, don't, I mean if we want to get philosophical about style which i'm always down to do do you want to do you want to just a little bit let's get phil philosophical I do think philosophical. I do think I, I had a hard time saying <laughs> it's okay. I I I can't speak today. Okay. I think that style and the way you draw is almost like your it's your narrative handwriting to get really yeah. dumb about like it. But it, it it's it's so specific to you. Like if I were to ask someone to write their name right now, they wouldn't really. They might think about okay, I want this to look neat, or I want this to be cursive, or I want this to be all caps but the way that you make an a like where you start that letter like in the like the how heavy you push down on the pen that's specific yeah. to you whether you round it or do the yeah lines, yeah, yeah. And, and it's the same with like how how you look at the world like are you focusing on foliage are you focusing on people are you focusing on explosions and action it's just it's it's who it's what you're inclined to draw and yeah. how you draw it yeah i and i i do think 100 percent. it's like try and notice what you're noticing about the things that you're you like so yeah if it is like i notice that in the the shows that i like or like the movies that i like or the comics like i'm looking at the place that they're in i'm looking yeah. at the background what do i like about that do i you know gravitate towards things that have sort of a natural vibe like are they are they amongst the trees or something yeah. is is that and and you know when you look at that you're like how would i render this how would i how would i impart this to somebody else that i don't know and i think aaron's here with questions but i have one last question for both of us how do you how do we like borrow or steal from works that we admire there are a few ways how <laughs> now um uh so i yes i have like two things either it's something that i love and i borrow from that or it's something that i hate <gasps> from that really yes. wait you're the hate too i hate too i borrow from the hate uh if it see Here's the thing, I have never once and never had an inclination to write fan art or write fan fiction in my entire life. All I do is when I see something that I'm not satisfied with, and I'm like, this could be better. I take the whole thing for myself and I tear it up and find the pieces that I like and I put that in something else. Okay. Like, for me, an example would be the newest Star Wars Oh, <laughs> hate. Wow. Um, Could have been so much more. <laughs> I still haven't seen it. I probably never will. You shouldn't. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, anybody who really likes it. It's fine. It's, it's fine in a lot of There were, it's, see, it's like I can't stop thinking about it and different parts of it, which is how you know I liked some of it, but then the rest of it I was like. <laughs> bah, you bah, say. Bah. bah. But then when I really love something and I feel like people. Well, yeah, if I really love something, I'll also do the same thing. And I take it and I tear it up and I take my little morsels out. And then I put that with the stuff that I hate and I make something new. And I think, I do think it's like reinterpreting. You consume yes. something and then, and uh, yeah, saying. yeah. Like if someone's like, oh, I'm so inspired by Steven Universe. It's looking at the art, like maybe even drawing fan art of it, but 
you may not like the way that um, the show draws hands, or you may not like the way that they deal with like line line art. But you how do they draw continue. ears? That's, huh? Like how do they draw ears? Yeah. Do they draw fingernails? Yeah. I didn't draw fingernails until I met you. If you don't draw fingernails, I'm gonna think your people's fingers are like little fleshy nubs. It's uncomfortable for me. If you don't, they're all wearing gloves, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. All the time. Oh, this going, Erin? It's going great. I'm having a great time. Good. You are so entertaining, and I'm learning a lot, and I really appreciate it. And we do so far have a couple of questions, and I want to just make sure we, we get a chance to ask them. Um, and I'm going to start with the second one first because it's related to inspiration. Uh, it was mentioned earlier how it can be tough to break out of your style. Do you have any suggestions or experience on how to change it up when you're feeling stuck? Um, I, one thing I've been doing a lot, because I'm a big dork, is looking at, like, one particular artist and just going through their, um, you know, portfolio of work and looking at, like, really trying to study what they're do doing. Um, for example, I've been obsessed with Grace Liu for the last few um, weeks and noticing that, okay, the way that she draws people, like she rarely draws people standing. It's just not fun for her. She said it before, it's not fun. Yeah, and so I draw a lot of people just kind of standing looking to the side. So what if I started drawing people like, you know, jumping at the camera and like punching and that kind of forces me to break out of uh, my, my comfort zone, really. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. It's like once you once you find something that makes you question your style, you're like, I love this so much that I have to find a way to incorporate it. I think then you sort of should get this itch to sort of explore it. And um, for me, lately, it's been um, a bunch of uh, Franco-Belgian comics, uh, which are enormous, which to me, I've just been drawing comic strips for so long. I'm like, look how big these pages are and how many panels are on every page and well, how are they able to put so many panels on the page? And so, yeah, I'll like do these, I'll just sit and just like look at like the panel, like each one individually for like an hour, just trying to like trace it all with my eyes to like figure out how are they doing that? And then, yeah, I'll, I'll do like some, some explorations. I'll start to thumbnail page for myself and be like, how big can I make these panels? How many panels can I put on here? Um, right, especially you're, you're working in the medium with the so-called infinite canvas. So exactly. you're limited. You can make it, you can web tunes, make it as long as you want. <laughs> Just go, go down for it. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the other question we got was a little, um, a little off topic, but, but I think it relates to both of you, so we're going to ask it anyway. And that's if you had the chance to make your comic series into an animated show. So I think, but it does get back to what Ngozi was talking about earlier with uh, being informed by animation and trying to make it uh, static. Um, but if you could make it into an animated show, would you do it? And why or why not? Um, I could jump in. I'm actually a little indifferent at this point to making check plays animated. I feel like it could be fun. I know a lot of the readers are like, please, you'd love to see that. But I know there's so many other stories I would rather tell. If I were at the helm directing it, I like there's so many other stories we could we can put out there. I want Sakana of anime. Sakana of anime. Um, I think I think Sakuna would work pretty good as an animated show. Um, maybe like a, one of those shows where the episodes are only like you know five minutes long, mm. oh. little, little quick blips. Um, I would like that. I don't. I think at this point, Sakuna is, is, and I have had such a journey, such a long journey, and uh, I think if somebody else was like, I will faithfully reproduce your whole thing word for word and you don't have to do anything, I'd be like, cool. As long as I have veto powers, yeah. uh, you can do whatever you want. I, I want veto powers, but I'm like, someone else can do this. I've, I've looked at the story. I've given you a strong base to work from. I'm gonna move over here and work on something else, but don't screw it up. That's my perfect world scenario. That is super, yeah, I think that's the, that's the tension you have to decide between, right? Do you, do you keep doing the work or do you let someone else potentially yeah. do things that you're unhappy about? 
We have another question and it says, hi, young artist here. Recently, people told me I developed a style, but I've been told I should have more than one to be a good artist. Do you think that's true? What is and that? how can I develop more than one style? Well, I think it depends, yeah, on are you satisfied with what you already have? Not that you can't learn and grow. I think that the goal is to have a versatile style. Yeah. Where, you know, it depends on, you know, it should look different if you spend five minutes or five hours on it, probably. I don't know if people would consider that to be two different styles. But. Um, I would say I'm, I'm, I'm like reimagining the context for this. Like if it was an art professor or art student who was, art teacher who was like, um, you should be able to draw realistically and also cartoons. Like I, that's kind of how I'm interpreting that, quite, like this question. And my answer for that is kind of like with music, you have a voice, right? And if you're trained classically, you should be able to, you know, sing the scale, sing and pitch. That's almost like drawing realistically, but you should also be able to, you know, rap or, you know, sing a pop song, like do something that's really fun just for you. That is yeah. maybe the, your inclination. So I, I personally do think that people should be able to have some realistic back foundation, but yeah, that's it all, like, it's yeah. all for the purpose of making sure that your voice is the strong, as strong as it can be. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, if, if, if you're like, oh, I should have an anime style and I should have a cartoony style and I should have a realistic style and mm -hmm. I should take jobs relating to all three of those, I don't think I don't that's think that advisable. Either. Find what you like to do, find a versa, try and develop a versatility, you know, Within a sliding that. scale, if you will, but you're usually in the middle. I think that's great. I think that's really good advice. And I think I've, we've seen more and more that we can make lots of different styles work for different kinds of stories. Um, and then we, it looks like we have one more question coming in. I'm getting, I'm getting the heads up. <laughs> Two, it says. <laughs> Sorry, we're get, I'm getting these real time, everyone. So, oh. <laughs> um, so that's fun. Um, he's, he's got to type it out. So it takes okay. a moment. Yeah. While we wait for, for that to happen, actually, maybe we can talk about, is there anything that two of you, either one of you would like to promote or, or share with the audience? Um, trying to think. You just the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can always, do you still have your store open? I do have, well, actually, yes, I just um, uh, restocked uh, my, um, uh, what's it called? My personal store. I have two stores. The one store is the store where you can get the Sakata books and also like prints and stuff. And then the other store is I have a bunch of um, stickers, like chicken yeah. that I made. I like farms. See? There it is. Oh, how cute. So cute. But yes, I just restocked that, so that's all ready to go. You can find links to both of those stores on uh, the Sakana comic website, which you can find on my Twitter. And, <laughs> so that's kind of difficult to find. I understand. But. Um, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt. No, that's fine. Um, Yes, and then I have a uh, check, please. You can actually read my entire comic for free online. Same with um, Yeah, it, the whole thing, like the whole thing's online, but this, my book is also, the story is also in bookstores. So there's check, please, book one, which is out, and check, please, book two, which just came out in April. Finishing the series, you can read all of it in an afternoon and have a lot of fun. Um, yeah. And yes. I guess, I guess there is an issue of Harley Quinn that came out, but. You don't have to, you can get that if you want to. Fantastic. We actually did uh, check, please, the volume one for the Kamikaze Book Club. So oh, uh, that, that, is a, that is a place that you can purchase those is you can go to the store or uh, email steve at kamikaze.com. And then um, the, because one of the questions is where, how do we find those two stories? And so. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, also, you can go to the ladiescon.com uh, website and we have links to, yeah. to everybody's stuff. So here's the last question and then we'll wrap up. Um, how have y'all developed your joke writing? You both write really funny comics <laughs> and mad. With Sakana, you were even hitting a punchline with most of your strips. Did the jokes come first with some of the writing in Check, Please and Sakana? 
Madeline, go for this question. Um, I owe I owe everything to Terry Pratchett. Uh, if you like the way that I write, then you should read Discworld and Good Omens, which probably more people have read than Discworld, since that just had a a show, which was a good adaptation. It was a, that was a faithful adaptation. Um, but that is my favorite book, and it has been for maybe fifteen years. And um, yeah, I would say that um, I come up with. The basic storyline, I, I know where the story's going and everything. And then most of my humor, if you look at it, it's mostly the funny faces. It's mostly funny faces, funny face humor. That's my, that is my calling card. Um, there's some, there's some wordplay that I'm proud of every now and then, which most of how I think of it is just, there they are, there they are. <laughs> You can't read it. It just says, people, sorry, people say we look alike, but I don't see it. I don't even wear glasses. I look exactly alike. Sorry. Thank you for embarrassing me. That was really funny. That was really funny. But, um, no, mostly the way that I develop jokes is I sit here at my uh, desk and I kind of, like, stare out the window for a while and just, like, oh, I should write that down. That's how I come up with, <laughs> That's how I come up with my jokes. Like, what would Terry do? Oh. How would he write this? But, I don't know. I think I have a pretty dry sense of humor, and it comes from my father. So you can uh, also uh, thank him for my sense of humor in all of my comics. Like, I, I don't know. Like, that is a really good question, because I've, I don't know, I, I can talk about Matt's comics, too. I've read a lot of comics that have tried to be funny, and I'm, I'm not naming any names, um, but like, there's just like this natural pacing that you have for your comics. And I think it could, it, it could even be the fact that you've done 10 years worth of comic strips, so you know how to deliver a punchline. I think I, practice, actually. I have practice. practice. I have some practice. Practice. Um, and I think also like facial expressions too, are just like, you're not afraid to get to- oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> you're, not, you're not afraid to like show that a character is dying from anxiety. Dying on the inside. And yeah. like, I love the fact that you're like, you want to, yeah. Um, and I don't know, for myself, a lot of my humor is character based. Like I introduce a character, try to get you to know who they are as soon as they, like as soon as I can, and then just make fun of them. Like, it, I, 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 my stories are very nice, but like as soon as you know that Biddy, um, likes to bake more than anything else to the fact that he won't do homework. Yes, I will draw a, a scene where like eight hockey players are trying to hold him down because he needs to finish his senior thesis. And he's, he weighs like, I don't know, he's, he was like 140 pounds or something. He's very tiny. And yeah. But like seven grown men are like, you can't, you can't bake right now. And he's you, fighting you, all of them. You tell us what the character wants and then you withhold it. From yeah. Him. And just, like just kind of just finding your character's flaws and then just exploiting them. Yeah. Uh, I, I think you also them. bring it with the facial expressions a oh, lot. Yeah. There's so, a so there's one more question and I know we're a little over time, but we're also pretty much at the last panel. So if you both have time for it, we'll ask it. And that's uh, for the, for the DC animated universe inspiration. Do you prefer the older style typified by Batman, the animated series, or the newer one, <laughs> typified by Superman slash New Batman Adventures. Um, I just haven't seen the new stuff, but mm -hmm. I find that it's it's still <laughs> how do I say it? It's still kind of the same, honestly. It's not like it, it's it's they didn't American the wheel there. It's American animation. Like I love it because I grew up with it, but it's it's still pretty pretty rigid. It's like all the same, like Bruce Tim proportions. Yeah, Basically. it's ec it's economical, efficient, and and you know straightforward. I'll be that's the kindest way I can call. It. There great. you have it. Thank you, Matt and Gozi. Thank you so much for being part of Ladies Con this year. This has been wonderful. Everyone, um, check out ladiescon.com. We have more panels tomorrow. And thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you.